Today we're going to talk about urban regime theory. Urban regime theory came to prominence with the publication of Clarence Stone's study of Atlanta in 1989. And in Clarence Stone's 1989 book, Regime Politics, uh, he documented the growth of the black electoral power in Atlanta from 1946 to 1988. Uh, this power threatened incumbent white power. <clears throat> the book documents the biracial coalition in which black constituents received major concessions from the white business community. Regime analysis has been extensively used to, to examine urban politics in North America. Urban regime theory views power as fragmented and regimes as collaborative arrangements through which local governments and private actors assemble to uh, gain the capacity to govern. The regime concept originates in a political economy perspective that rejects both the pluralist assumptions that governmental authority is, is adequate to make and carry out policies, as well as the structuralism assumptions that economic forces determine policy. Regimes overcome collective action and secure participation in the governing coalition through the distribution of selective incentives such as contracts, jobs, facil and facilities for particular neighborhoods. The regime is an informal yet relatively stable group with access to institutional resources that enable it to have a sustained role in making governing decisions. Collaboration is achieved not only through institutions, but also informal networks. Regimes bridge the divide uh, between popular control of government and private control of economic resources. Beyond the inclusion of local government and businesses, part participants in regimes may vary, including neighborhood organizations or organizations representing middle-class Americans. Cooperation is not taken as a given, but has to be achieved. Regimes cannot be assumed to exist in all cities. Uh, also, regimes can span a number of administrations. Distinctive policy agendas uh, can be identified that are influenced by the participants in, gover in a, the governing coalition, the nature of the relationship between participants, and the resources that bring that they bring to the coalition. Consensus is formed on the basis of interaction and the structuring of resources. Consensus is achieved through selective incentives and small opportunities. Regimes may not feature complete agreement over beliefs and values, but uh, through a history of collaboration uh, that would tend to produce consensus over policy. Now let's take a moment to focus in on Atlanta as a specific case. Atlanta was a city that was known to be too busy to hate. The idea that business, uh, business in the city was too important to let uh, the idea was that businesses in the city was, was too important to let racial politics get in the way. Though it was not about getting along uh, as a community, it was more important for business owners to prosper in the city than to be prejudiced. In the 1970s, Atlanta Mayor Maynard Jackson, the first black mayor of Atlanta, awarded over 30% of the city contracts uh, to minority contractors. This opened up new opportunities for black business owners. MARTA 
is extremely important to the growth of the city. When Marta was developed, uh, when, when Marta was developed, the resolution passed narrowly in a public vote, and the trade-off was with a regressive sales tax. Marta doesn't extend into many counties today because citizens in those counties refuse to vote for it, uh, something that was greatly influenced by racial politics. However, if you don't have good public transportation, uh, if, if Atlanta didn't have good public transportation, the city would not be able to do things like host the Super Bowl or attract the Olympics. In the 1980s, the federal government began giving money to states rather than directly to cities, uh, more so than, than before. The strategy then for the city became more heavily reliant on public-private partnerships, the things we look for in urban regimes. The hospitality industry became important too, which helped bring the Olympics to Atlanta. The Olympics gave Atlanta a spot on the national stage. While other countries have uh, federal support for hosting, Atlanta had to fund projects for the Olympics through public-private partnerships. And you can see these public-private partnerships uh, continue to build things in Atlanta today with uh, uh, the development of sports stadiums and um, other uh, things to attract people into the city. While Atlanta has been a success story in public and private partnerships, the city has struggled to address issues of poverty and education, which, uh, which of course, uh, uh, the business interests have less um, stake in solving issues of poverty and issues of education, and uh, racial politics, of course, continue to play a role in uh, uh, many of these issues.